which is, from what I understand, extremely ambitious uh, and somewhat ruthless. She's been groomed for something because she's been at his side for the last few years. Have you heard what happened to Kim Jong-un's sister? Kim Yo-jong once operated quietly in the background of North Korea's regime, but she has now emerged as one of the most powerful figures in the secretive state. As her brother's closest advisor, she has taken on critical diplomatic and political roles, and she now manages key affairs and shapes the country's future. With growing whispers about Kim Jong-un's health and rumors of shifting power dynamics, it's worth asking the question, what will happen to Kim Jong-un's sister as she shoulders more responsibility within this enigmatic regime? Change seems inevitable, but what's next? Kim Yo-jong, the rise of a powerful woman. Kim Yo-jong has emerged as one of the most influential figures within the North Korean regime. She is the youngest child of Kim Jong-il and his consort, Ko yong hui Like her brother, she was groomed from an early age to understand the intricacies of power in North Korea, a regime dominated by family lineage and a cult of personality centered around the Kim family. Although much of her early life remains shrouded in secrecy, it is known that she, along with Kim Jong-un, was educated in Switzerland under an alias to protect her identity. Her foreign education, coupled with a deep understanding of North Korea's internal workings, would later serve her well as she rose through the ranks of power. Kim Yo-jong's rise to power was not sudden. For years, she operated quietly behind the scenes. She rarely made public appearances, and her initial roles within the regime were administrative. Her early tasks involved managing the public image of the regime, which eventually became a cornerstone of her responsibilities. It wasn't until 2014, following Kim Jong-un's consolidation of power after their father's death, that Kim Yo-jong began to gain more prominence. As her brother solidified his leadership, she became an integral part of his inner circle. Officially, she was appointed to the North Korean Propaganda and Agitation Department, a key role that tasked her with managing the regime's public image and controlling the narrative surrounding her brother's leadership. Her influence extended beyond the realm of media. She now played a critical role in shaping how the regime presented itself both domestically and internationally. Her ability to maintain tight control over the regime's propaganda machine further solidified her position within the ruling family. Kim Yo-jong's importance to the regime grew steadily. By 2017, her role had expanded beyond just propaganda management. She became one of her brother's most trusted advisors, a figure who could be relied upon to handle sensitive diplomatic matters and manage state affairs. This period marked a significant shift in her public visibility as well. For the first time, she began to appear alongside Kim Jong-un at key political and military events. This signaled to the world that she was more than just a background figure. She was a vital part of North Korea's power structure. Her diplomatic debut came in 2018 when she led North Korea's delegation to the Winter Olympics in South Korea, a move that was seen as a breakthrough in inter-Korean relations. The world took notice as Kim Yo-jong became the first member of North Korea's ruling family to visit South Korea since the Korean War. She was poised, calm, and diplomatic during her visit, and her presence at the Games was widely interpreted as a sign of her growing influence. More than just a symbolic figure, she played a critical role in warming relations between the two Koreas during this period and paved the way for the historic summits between Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in. Kim Yo-jong's involvement in these key moments demonstrated her capacity for diplomacy and her ability to operate on the global stage. While Kim Yo-jong's rise to power has been largely driven by her loyalty to her brother, and her political acumen, there is no doubt that her growing prominence also stems from the Kim family's dynastic nature. In North Korea, power is kept within the family, 
and as Kim Jong-un's closest sibling, she is uniquely positioned to wield significant influence. Her ability to navigate the dangerous waters of North Korean politics, where even family members have been purged, speaks to her political savvy and her close relationship with Kim Jong-un. Her rise, however, has not been without risks. The dynamics of power within North Korea are notoriously volatile, and any sign of weakness or ambition can lead to sudden downfalls, even for those closest to the leader. Yet, Kim Yo-jong has managed to maintain her position by balancing loyalty to her brother with a growing assertiveness in her political role. She remains one of the few people Kim Jong-un can trust, a position that has allowed her to exert significant influence over the regime's direction. Diplomatic roles and state management. One of the first major moments that cemented Kim Yo-jong's role in diplomacy was her participation in the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea. Her appearance at the Games was not just a symbolic gesture, but a strategic move designed to soften North Korea's international image during a period of heightened tensions on the Korean peninsula. At the time, North Korea's nuclear program had led to severe international sanctions and near-daily threats of conflict between Pyongyang and Washington. Kim Yo-jong's visit was widely seen as an olive branch, signaling that the regime was open to dialogue. Her presence at the Winter Olympics was highly significant, given the fraught relationship between the two Koreas. During the Games, Kim Yo-jong earned praise from both South Korean officials and the international media. She attended the opening ceremony alongside South Korean President Moon Jae-in, where she was seen smiling and interacting with world leaders. This moment signaled a shift in North Korea's diplomatic approach, and Kim Yo-jong quickly became the face of this new, albeit temporary, outreach effort. While her attendance at the Winter Olympics was brief, the impact was long-lasting. Shortly after the Games, South Korea's government announced plans for high-level talks with North Korea, laying the groundwork for the historic inter-Korean summits later that year. Kim Yo-jong played a critical behind-the-scenes role in these negotiations. She facilitated communication between Pyongyang and Seoul, and as her brother's key representative, she helped shape the tone of the discussions. Her diplomatic influence extended to the high-profile summits between Kim Jong-un and US President Donald Trump. In 2018 and 2019, the world watched as the two leaders held unprecedented meetings in Singapore and Hanoi with hopes that a resolution to the long-standing nuclear standoff could be reached. During these summits, Kim Yo-jong managed key aspects of the diplomatic engagements and ensured that her brother was well prepared for the highly choreographed meetings. Though the summits ultimately failed to produce a lasting agreement, Kim Yo-jong's role in orchestrating North Korea's participation was undeniable. She remained by her brother's side throughout the process, offered advice, and helped to manage the optics of the negotiations. Kim Yo-jong's influence in state management and policymaking became even more apparent in the years following these summits. As tensions with South Korea resurfaced in 2020, she took a more aggressive stance. She issued sharp rhetoric against the South Korean government, and in one instance, she even publicly criticized South Korea for allowing anti-North Korean activists to send propaganda leaflets across the border. She called the action a hostile provocation. In response, North Korea blew up the joint liaison office it had established with South Korea in a highly symbolic act of defiance. This incident marked a shift in Kim Yo-jong's public persona from a quiet diplomatic envoy to a more assertive figure willing to take hardline positions on behalf of her brother's regime. Her growing assertiveness was further demonstrated when she began issuing official statements on behalf of the North Korean government, a role typically reserved for high-ranking officials. These statements, often targeting South Korea or the United States, 
reflected her increasing control over state affairs. By 2021, she had become one of the most visible faces of North Korea's leadership. Some analysts even suggested that she was being groomed to eventually take on an even more prominent role in the regime's decision-making process. In addition to her diplomatic responsibilities, Kim Yo-jong has also been involved in managing the domestic affairs of North Korea. As a member of the Workers' Party of Korea's Politburo, she has been entrusted with overseeing key elements of the regime's propaganda and ideological campaigns. Her role in shaping North Korea's internal narrative is critical. She ensures that the regime's messaging remains consistent with the goals of maintaining absolute control and fostering loyalty to the Kim family. One of the most significant aspects of Kim Yo-jong's role in state management has been her ability to present North Korea's policy decisions with a degree of pragmatism, even while maintaining the regime's hardline stance. She has become a skilled diplomat who can navigate complex international negotiations while safeguarding North Korea's sovereignty and interests. Her diplomatic finesse, coupled with her loyalty to her brother, has positioned her as an indispensable figure within the regime. However, Kim Yo-jong's increasing visibility and influence have also sparked questions about the future of North Korea's leadership. As her brother's health has come under scrutiny in recent years, many have speculated that Kim Yo-jong could be preparing to take on even more responsibilities within the regime. Some analysts believe that her growing authority signals a potential shift in the power dynamics of the Kim family, with Kim Yo-jong playing a more prominent role in shaping North Korea's future policies. Whether or not she will succeed, her brother remains uncertain, but her diplomatic and political acumen have certainly set the stage for her continued rise within the regime. Handling North Korea's Propaganda Machine as the Deputy Director of the Propaganda and Agitation Department of the Workers' Party of Korea, Kim Yo-jong has been tasked with overseeing the tightly controlled messaging that flows from Pyongyang to the people of North Korea. Her job is not merely one of managing information, but of crafting a myth, an intricate narrative that exalts her brother as an infallible, almost divine leader. This narrative has been instrumental in maintaining the loyalty and obedience of North Korea's citizens and ensuring the survival of the regime amidst international isolation and economic challenges. From the moment Kim Jong-un assumed power in 2011, his leadership style has been meticulously crafted through propaganda. Under Kim Yo-jong's watch, North Korean state media has projected him as a strong, caring leader who embodies the revolutionary spirit of his father and grandfather. She ensures that images of Kim Jong-un interacting with soldiers, visiting factories, and offering guidance to workers are circulated to reinforce his image as a leader who is intimately involved in the nation's progress. A key strategy under Kim Yo-jong's control has been to portray Kim Jong-un as a military leader and also as a man of the people. In North Korean media, he is often shown smiling and engaging with citizens, listening to their concerns and making grand gestures of benevolence. This carefully curated image has helped foster a sense of personal loyalty to Kim Jong-un among the population, despite the harsh realities of life in the regime. Even in times of economic difficulty, the narrative pushed by the state has been one of national strength and resilience with Kim Jong-un depicted as the shepherd guiding his people through adversity. Kim Yo-jong's role in media control also involves managing how North Korea interacts with the outside world. When Kim Jong-un makes international headlines, whether through missile tests, summits with world leaders, or statements aimed at foreign governments, it is often Kim Yo-jong who is orchestrating the messaging behind the scenes. One of her primary tasks is to ensure that North Korea's actions are framed in a way that supports the regime's narrative of sovereignty and strength. For instance, 
even when North Korea is subjected to international sanctions or condemned for its human rights abuses, the regime's media, under Kim Yo-jong's guidance, portrays these developments as external attacks meant to undermine the nation's sovereignty. This serves to rally domestic support for Kim Jong-un by casting him as a protector against foreign adversaries. Beyond shaping her brother's image, Kim Yo-jong has also played a significant role in reinforcing the cult of personality that surrounds the Kim family. In North Korea, the Kim dynasty is not merely seen as a political entity, but as a line of quasi-deified rulers. The state media consistently reminds citizens that the Kim family is the heart of the nation, with Kim Jong-un serving as the ultimate symbol of national unity and strength. Kim Yo-jong ensures that this narrative is maintained through a combination of reverent reporting, larger-than-life portrayals of the Kim family's achievements, and a careful control of historical memory. By elevating her brother's status, she ensures the continued veneration of the family and the regime's unchallenged authority. Another aspect of Kim Yo-jong's propaganda strategy has been controlling how state actions are perceived, particularly in times of crisis. For instance, during natural disasters or food shortages, the regime's media outlets, under her direction, present these challenges as opportunities for Kim Jong-un to demonstrate his leadership. Rather than acknowledging systemic failures or the impact of international sanctions, the media portrays Kim Jong-un as a leader tirelessly working to alleviate the suffering of his people. The shift in power, growing responsibilities. Kim Yo-jong's rise from a behind-the-scenes operative to a key figure in the regime has not been sudden, but it has become more pronounced as concerns over Kim Jong-un's health have intensified. Since 2020, there have been several high-profile instances in which Kim Jong-un's health, or even his survival, was speculated upon. And of course, it has fueled questions about who might succeed him if he were incapacitated. During these periods of uncertainty, Kim Yo-jong has increasingly taken on a leadership role, handling more of the day-to-day -day affairs of the regime and stepping into the spotlight in ways that were previously reserved for her brother. One of the clearest indicators of Kim Yo-jong's growing responsibilities came in early 2020, when Kim Jong-un disappeared from public view for several weeks. International media outlets reported that the North Korean leader had undergone heart surgery and was in critical condition, while others suggested he had succumbed to illness. During this period of uncertainty, Kim Yo-jong was notably visible. She issued public statements and guided policy decisions, which many saw as a sign that she was being groomed to take on more responsibility within the regime. While Kim Jong-un eventually reappeared, seemingly healthy, Kim Yo-jong's heightened role during his absence did not diminish. Instead, she became even more active in North Korea's political and diplomatic affairs, issuing official statements on the regime's behalf and representing the government in high-stakes international engagements. This marked a significant departure from her earlier role, where she operated more discreetly behind the scenes. It became increasingly clear that Kim Yo-jong was more than just a trusted advisor. She was an integral part of North Korea's leadership structure. Her growing responsibilities also reflect the regime's need for continuity and stability. In a country like North Korea, where the ruling family's power is closely tied to the cult of personality surrounding the Kim dynasty, any sign of instability or weakness at the top could lead to internal discord or external threats. Kim Yo-jong's ability to seamlessly take on more responsibilities while maintaining her brother's public image has been crucial in ensuring that the regime remains unchallenged. By gradually expanding her influence, Kim Yo-jong has helped solidify the perception of stability within North Korea, even as questions about her brother's health persist. Beyond her growing influence in inter-Korean relations, Kim Yo-jong 
has also taken on a more assertive role in North Korea's dealings with the United States and other international powers. Her presence at high-profile negotiations suggests that she is deeply involved in shaping the country's approach to international diplomacy. Many analysts have pointed to this growing prominence as evidence of a possible shift in the power dynamics within North Korea. Traditionally, power within the regime has been concentrated solely in the hands of the supreme leader. Other family members and high-ranking officials serve in secondary supportive roles. However, Kim Yo-jong's increasing involvement in state affairs has led some to speculate that North Korea's leadership structure may be evolving. While Kim Jong-un remains the face of the regime, it is possible that Kim Yo-jong is being positioned as a potential co-leader in a future dual leadership arrangement. One of the reasons for Kim Yo-jong's growing responsibilities is her close relationship with her brother. As the youngest children of Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-un and Kim Yo-jong grew up together and shared similar experiences in the isolated and insular world of the North Korean elite. This bond has made Kim Yo-jong one of the few people whom Kim Jong-un can trust implicitly, a rare commodity in a regime known for its purges and internal power struggles. Her loyalty to her brother, combined with her political acumen, has made her an indispensable figure in the regime's hierarchy. There is also evidence to suggest that Kim Jong-un's decision to delegate more power to his sister is a strategic move designed to strengthen the regime's stability. As Kim Jong-un faces growing pressure from international sanctions, economic challenges, and the ongoing pandemic, it is possible that he sees Kim Yo-jong as the ideal partner to help him manage the regime's increasingly complex challenges. By sharing the burden of leadership with his sister, Kim Jong-un may be positioning the regime for a more sustainable future, one in which power is shared among a trusted inner circle rather than concentrated solely in the hands of a single leader. However, Kim Yo-jong's growing prominence has also raised questions about potential power struggles within the regime. North Korean politics is notoriously opaque, and the concentration of power within the Kim family has historically led to rivalries and purges. While Kim Yo-jong has thus far maintained her brother's trust, her increasing influence could potentially make her a target for other high-ranking officials who may view her as a threat to their own power. The Kim regime has a long history of internal power struggles, and it remains to be seen whether Kim Yo-jong's rise will provoke similar challenges. The threat from within, power struggles in Pyongyang. One of the most talked about sources of tension revolves around Kim Yo-jong's relationship with Kim Jong-un's wife, Ri Sol-ju. Although North Korea's first lady has been largely kept out of the public eye, she has also gradually taken on a more visible role in the country's state affairs. As the mother of Kim Jong-un's children, Ri Sol-ju holds significant influence and is positioned to safeguard her family's future. The growing prominence of both women in the regime has sparked speculation about a power struggle between them, as their roles within North Korea's leadership are both influential yet potentially conflicting. On the surface, Kim Yo-jong and Ri Sol-ju may appear to have complementary roles, one as the trusted political advisor and the other as the symbolic first lady. However, the underlying tension stems from the fact that both wield considerable influence within the regime, albeit in different ways. While Kim Yo-jong has focused on political strategy, state management and diplomacy, Ri Sol-ju has worked to present a more modern and family-oriented image of the regime. And she often accompanies Kim Jong-un to public events. These contrasting roles may create friction, particularly if Kim Yo-jong's influence begins to overshadow the public presence of Ri Sol-ju. In a regime where power is concentrated and jealously guarded, such tensions could pose a threat to the stability of the Kim family.
Moreover, Kim Yo Jong's closeness to her brother has fueled speculation that she may be positioning herself as a potential successor or co-ruler. In a patriarchal system like North Korea's, where male leadership has historically been the norm, Kim Yo Jong's ascent presents a unique challenge to the traditional order. This has likely stirred unease within the regime's elite, where high-ranking male officials may view her growing power with suspicion. Any sign of ambition beyond her role as Kim Jong-un's advisor could be perceived as a threat by those who see her rise as an attempt to disrupt the status quo. Even within the Kim family, loyalty is not guaranteed to protect someone from elimination. Kim Jong-un himself ordered the execution of his own uncle, Jang Song Thayek, in 2013, citing disloyalty and attempts to undermine the regime. Jang Song Thayek was once considered one of the most powerful men in North Korea, second only to Kim Jong-un. But his fate is a chilling reminder of how quickly power can be stripped away in Pyongyang. For Kim Yo-jong, the danger of being viewed as a rival or threat to Kim Jong-un's leadership is ever-present. Additionally, Kim Yo-jong's increasing involvement in both domestic and international affairs has made her a more prominent figure than many of the regime's established elites. This has likely triggered unease among other high-ranking officials who may fear that her growing influence could undermine their own power. Within the Workers' Party of Korea, where loyalty to the leader is paramount, any perception that Kim Yo-jong is amassing too much control could provoke retaliation from those who seek to preserve their positions. The balance of power in North Korea is delicate. Even the slightest misstep could lead to political consequences. Furthermore, the prospect of internal power struggles is heightened by the unpredictable nature of Kim Jong-un's leadership. While he has consistently relied on his sister's counsel, Kim Jong-un is known for his ruthlessness and unpredictability. The motivation for his decisions can and has been known to change in an instant. Should Kim Jong-un feel threatened by Kim Yo-jong's growing influence, it is not impossible that he could turn on her to maintain his grip on power. In such a scenario, her once unshakable position as his trusted advisor could become precarious. Despite these risks, Kim Yo-jong has demonstrated an ability to navigate the treacherous waters of North Korean politics with remarkable skill. And she is playing her cards close to her chest. Her loyalty to her brother seems unwavering, and she has shown no overt signs of overstepping her boundaries. Instead, she has carefully balanced her growing responsibilities with a public display of deference to Kim Jong-un, ensuring that her actions are framed as efforts to support rather than challenge his leadership. This delicate balancing act has allowed her to maintain her position within the regime while expanding her influence. Yet the possibility of power struggles remains a significant factor in shaping Kim Yo-jong's future. Do you think major change is afoot in North Korea's leadership, especially considering Kim Jong-un's health issues? Share your thoughts with us in the comments. We'd love to hear. For now, though, we're out of here. We'll catch you in the next video.